Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, a forum for business owners and senior executives to share the experiences about the elements that drive their success. Your host is Robert Brill, CEO of BrillMedia.co. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today we have Vivek and Varun Sharma. Uh, Vivek is the uh, CEO of Lemire Gourmet Foods, uh, Fruits, and Varun Sharma is the co-founder of Lemire Gourmet Fruits. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thanks. So um, where, are you, where are you guys located? Uh, we are uh, in California. We are in Central California, Bakersfield. And uh, tell us a little bit about your business. Uh, we are, um, uh, as the name also says, um, we are into gourmet fruits. And uh, gourmet fruits is basically um, uh, dried fruits and nuts. And we create uh, offerings from that. Sitting in Central California gives us kind of access to all the material here. And we try to create some kind of gourmet recipes, healthy ones, not without, without adding any kind of sugar or just kind of on a healthy side of business. So no high fructose corn syrup in it? Absolutely not. And and where are these recipes coming from? Like, how did you come, come across these recipes? Uh, I have an uh, industry background and I've been uh, associated with the fruits and food industry since past more than two decades. So I have been, I have good experience on this, but yes, the recipes, we create the recipes. God, th these look really good. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and so your direct to consumer brand, when did you guys get started? We commercially started uh, last year, uh, uh, August, and uh, the company we started a year before that. So it took us one year to have a setup, have the right sourcing, but commercially we started by the third quarter of last year. Yeah. So tell us about the, the, the sourcing and manufacturing and, and where do you guys deliver to? Uh, sourcing is a very interesting part. I, I, we came to Central California because we are in a valley where almost everything is available. You have a lot of pistachios, pecans, almonds. Bakerfield probably produces uh, uh, is a biggest producer of almonds in the world. So we, uh, uh, the purpose of coming to Central California was to have access to the fresh and the best dried fruits and nuts. That's what we do, uh, but it's not 100%. We do import uh, uh, and we do buy from other parts of the of U.S. also. Amazing. And so what was the, like, wh why did you get up? You got up one morning and you said, I'm going to start a business. <laughs> like, tell, us, tell us about, about that story. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes, it takes, um, uh, um, uh, I, I know fruit industry uh, very well. And, uh, uh, the idea and, uh, the conceptualization and till execution is a lot of planning a lot of uh, time it takes. Almost, I think it took me four years to have it started actually. So the concept started four years back and I was kind of trying to get on a healthier side of uh, food business and that's how it happened. And what's the core concept or the, the mission of the business? I mean, like like this is such a unique looking like food and I'm, and I'm a big foodie, by the way. I love really good and interesting food. I have a whole uh, Instagram account dedicated to food photos. So like, this is a particular passion point of mine. Tell us, tell us about like where this comes from. Like what, what's, what's the story behind it? I think uh, uh, I, I could foresee that happening. And uh, in coming years, you'll see more of this happening, a trend for healthy food. And uh, I saw that when I saw that majority of the people at one time were kind of hooked to junk food or uh, uh, very much, I mean, you go to the fast food places mm -hmm. and you go to the places where the food value is so low that that was really a concern. And I really wanted to create something 
it's it it was almost sure that having um, after having so many uh, uh, years of bad food, people will eventually come back to the healthy side of life, and this is absolutely. Uh, uh, it's a purpose driven it's not just a commercial i wanted to do something out of my experience to offer something a healthy recipe to the people and do you have a do you have a brick and mortar retail location or is it purely direct to consumer we don't have uh we don't have a shop um, but um uh, idea is to collaborate with uh, certain gourmet stores to have the shop in shop sort of thing very soon and that's in the pipeline that might include um, travel retail business also which we are aiming for and try to have some products available across the world on the duty free side and so and so how do people how do people like tell us about your sales and how people find you and tell us about your distribution uh, it's a primarily um, online business model um, it was initially a choice, and nowadays for everybody, it's almost a compulsion. <laughs> um, so um, we really had to um, uh, try very slow. It's not something that people know the brand or people know the kind of food they are trying to have it. So it's almost, um, I think, six months of introduction that almost uh, uh, people took time to understand the brand. And yeah. now we feel that uh, somewhere uh, people identify us with a good food. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, lo- I'm looking at your, I'm looking at your, um, your page. I'm looking at your social media, your uh, Instagram account. It would indicate to me that you're working with influencers. Tell us about your marketing and how you've and how you've grown the business. You know, the goal of this podcast is to share ideas and stories of how businesses of all types can grow and scale. We're a marketing and advertising firm. That's what we do. So we want to hear firsthand accounts of how people have have taken a business and idea and turned it into something that a lot of people are are buying. I, I think I can answer that one. So yeah. I think as my dad was just saying, we started off, took a good six months to get a steady foothold. We got people to understand what the brand is, what we're trying to do. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit unique. Uh, and slowly we started gaining that sort of traction, even with influencers. A lot of healthy influencers reached out to us, wanted to support us and the brand. And that has played a very crucial role in how we market ourselves. So much so that we're working on a partners program at this point of time, where we work with these influencers to to have a more long-term collaboration. It's kind of what we are doing. And uh, they have played a very important role because let's face it, the influencers today know what they're doing uh, and working working with them is the only way to go. If they like your brand, they will support it and uh, definitely works out very well. That's, that's always been a key marketing strategy for us. Uh, but because we are online based, a lot of our advertisement is running on digital platforms. Uh, sure you know it uh, better than us, but the idea of running it on Facebook, Instagram, Google has been a very critical feature in how we acquire customers and continue the relationship with them because acquiring customer uh, is just the first part of the journey and then cultivating that relationship to have more of a long-term effect and long-lasting effect is kind of what we've been focusing on lately. I love it. And so... Which is your primary, like if you have to choose one, influencers or Facebook ads, which is, is there is one driving a, a larger percentage of your overall sales than the other? I mean, I think it depends on how much effort we're putting into both. A lot of our effort has been put into Facebook ads um, and Instagram ads compared to influencers. And that's probably why it is doing better. But that in no way means I undermine what influencer marketing can do for us uh, in the near future. I'm looking at your ads on on uh, Facebook and Instagram. They look really good, very appetizing. Do you find, yeah, uh, what kinds of what kind of audiences are you are you targeting? I mean, look, I, I'm you know these 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 can would you call them candies? Would you call them desserts? How um, would you? So, so I'm glad you brought that question up. Uh, we try not to be called a candy or uh, a, or something something on those lines. We try to call it a delicacy or a product by itself. Uh, I think it depends a little bit on how you brand the product. And we want to set the image that this is a premium product 
what you're consuming. And this is made out of all the good stuff. Like we don't hide what we have in the box. It's very clear. Our ingredients are right there. And you will see uh, that you can read and quite literally know what you're what you're getting into. Um, so so in terms of marketing and the, uh, the segmentation that we look at, um, a lot of women are are big fans of the of the brand and they have been something we've been focusing on um in terms of in terms of age we're we're looking uh 20 20 to 50 i think that as wide as it sounds that's how wide the audience is uh, we're also getting very selective on the kind of events we're catering to because we fall a little bit in the gifting category as well so we need to always make sure that we're catering to the right audience we had uh we more like just launched a La Autumn collection, which is for Halloween, uh, fall, and the autumn get-togethers that continues all the way to Thanksgiving. We have a Christmas collection coming up, which we call Kadyu the Noel collection. Uh, super excited for that. We had it last year. It worked really well. For the first time, we have a Hanukkah collection coming up, which is kosher certified. Uh, and we think that's a community that we really want to support. And we're trying to reach out to them. And the fourth big collection in the next three months, we have is the Diwali collection, which is catered to the Indian community. Um, I think from a premium gifting option, all of these communities are looking at uh, an alternative, are looking at uh, something different, and we think we can cater to them. Um, and that's that's where it gets more important to focus on a niche and to actually work out a product that works well for them and not just do it for, for kind, of, kind of the masses just for the sake of doing it. Are you guys running the ads in house? Uh, we do, we do, we do run it in house, and we do work with a few partners as well. Uh, quite, quite a few of experts. Uh, we're in the learning process, and they have played a really crucial role in helping us learn what's right and what's what's not right. I'm always, I'm always interested to see like the 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 experiences that people have running ads in house, because. What we find is that it's like it's it's a full time job, and we we have we have a number of people on our team, and all they do is they buy advertising, they look at the data. It's it, and I find it's it's exceptional when I find companies who can do it all in house. Certainly, larger companies, it's great because they have lots of people and they have big budgets. It's always this the independent businesses that do well with that that are very impressive because advertising and marketing, if you don't have the knack for it, it can be very difficult. But when it works, it's like magic. Yeah, I will add something to your last question. You asked that what is our target audience, and that's a very interesting thing. It goes the other way around that you introduce a product and then three months down the line, uh, you realize that who's liking your product and that becomes your target. Rather, you, we targeted we targeted for just for everybody and then it defined itself. So what I realize is that the target, we, we were surprised. We were surprised by ourselves and we were surprised by the success of our mobile platform compared to uh, the traditional platform yeah. also. So I think that segment companies, what I feel and what we what we learn through the process is that it should be left a bit open and then yeah. come back to uh, yeah. where the segment fits itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and and that's you know that's a that's a big part of what we espouse for our clients, which is you definitely want to make informed decisions about who you're targeting. Uh, certainly, but make it broad enough so that Absolutely. from an advertising perspective, the data will tell you who your customers are or aren't, right? Uh, by age, gender, interest, yeah. Yeah. creative messaging, platform, the whole thing. Yes. There is there is an idea I want to add to that. I mean, a lot of times uh, we've seen, I mean, a, f- a few friends of mine, they have tend to go too much with the data and then that becomes a bigger problem. So I, I don't think so. It's just that if data is telling you that X is working, uh, you should only be focusing on that. At the same time, you need to understand maybe you're just getting it wrong by targeting it initially. Maybe the initial assessment might have been wrong. So I think a little bit of study is required from a personal aspect as well, along with data. If anything, I'm a big, big supporter of data. Definitely. Um, and you know, you know, with Facebook ads in particular, you can run so many different creative executions that it tells you which which messages do really well, right? Like for example, men or women, yeah. uh, young or old, 
uh, showing your product or not showing your product. Like there's there's an there's an infinite variation that you can do ultimately as you uh, throughout the duration of your campaign. And it what I think a lot and I love I love talking to direct to consumer brands because you guys tend to I think feel this more more in your business. The advertising directly impacts what you do with your business. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like like you can say and I, I and I wonder if you might want to talk talk to that like when you think about the product lines and the gifting that you that you create is there any impact from the advertising that you see? Do you find that one audience does better and one audience does poor? So we're going to go for, you know, into that audience because that's what the largest brands are doing. They're saying, yeah. look, advertising does one thing. We're going to change our product because the advertising says something interesting. I agree. And that's, that's where it becomes really important when you have a lot of data combined. Whereas a brand like us, we've been in the business for an year. We have data worth one year, which we're uh, kind of figuring out. But down down the line, I definitely see us making more decisions based on data, uh, and th- I think that's that's the right way to go. Uh, as of now, we haven't reached that stage. So, for example, the Hanukkah collection uh, is a first time collection. Uh, we're hoping the Jewish community likes it, and we're going to be working on that primarily. Um, Let me share the secret. Yeah, we with actually, you. Yeah. <laughs> Let me share the secret with you. Not even shared anywhere. This is this is Hanukkah. Yeah, nice. This is. So much for Hanukkah. Uh, the even the recipes have been picked up, very, very, very traditional recipes. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing. This is exclusive. It's an exclusive. This is exclusive. It's exclusive. podcast. It's a it's a first time. Um, uh, this has been done now, and you're the first person outside the company yeah. seeing this. Well, thank you. That's it's fantastic to get that exclusive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. As as COVID nineteen became a thing, uh, how does that affect your distribution? How does that affect your packaging, your sales? I think um, uh, what we did and what uh, I think most of the companies also did is business uh, dynamics have shifted a little bit. Your business model for most of the companies and for us also mm-hmm. has tilted a little bit, and we and it's it's out of it's it's not your choice you have to do it because this is how the market is behaving now so i think our business model also the uh, um, uh, the beginning of the year the plan was uh, uh, like you said brick and mortar the plan was the same to have more a very strong b2b but that didn't happen and we were not able to uh, travel and we were not able to um, at least to the people and so many and so many of the food outlets were literally, I mean, they were closed. So the business model changed for everybody. It changed for us also. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at it from another perspective, it strengthened our e-commerce presence. Yeah. And that's something we dwelled deeper and deeper into. Uh, like the effort that has been put into the website is finally showing results in the last few months. Because it takes time to get get that sort of yeah. leverage and get that sort of customer base on your website that is coming back. Um, so I think our our focus being D two C has definitely helped us in one aspect. Um, but if anything, uh, like my dad just said, we lost a little bit of B two B that we were trying to focus on. So your B two B plan of action was to be at conferences or to travel to meetings? Like, what was your pre-COVID B2B plan? Uh, uh, we are a Gume fruit company, and we had intention of collaborating with the Gome stores, very, very high-end Gome stores across the country. And that was, that got disrupted because uh, uh, most of the stores had tough time. And they're still having that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's an opportunity. It's a it's an opportunity. You know, I was thinking of B two B. Like, you know, we're doing some really great stuff, generating leads for our business. And this is one of the one of the first times in the history of our business that we've existed where we have robust marketing for ourselves. Hundreds of leads coming in uh, on a one to two week basis, and. Um, and I, I imagine for you guys, gifting is a massive, like through this podcast, what I, what I found is that like I'm coming up, I'm finding 
individuals and entrepreneurs who have really great gifting ideas. And I guess by uh, opportunities, right? Like cookies and, and the fruits and, and, and other, like I talked to the, the last episode that I recorded is for someone who does uh, celebrity ducks, like rubber oh. ducks. <laughs> it's the silliest oh. thing. <laughs> so like that's a cool gift. That's yeah. a cool business gift. Yeah. I imagine there's an opportunity for you to generate leads for B2B gifting as a, as a completely separate business. Is that something that you've thought of or is that like not, not in your radar right now? Uh, a learning and uh, probably a plan. Uh, currently, the focus is we're heading for a very high season now. Uh, we have back-to-back uh, -back, uh, high season now, festivity. But the idea is that uh, the, by next year, we hope to have a wider product range and more offering to B2B on the Gome side because there's so much to do. There is so much. We've not done, we've done nothing almost. We have Amazing. so much to do. Yes. Yeah. What, um, in terms of starting up and, and getting the business off the ground, what were your, what took the longest? Was it finding the right, product mix and manufacturing or you know production was it the website was it figuring out where you want to go with the business uh, you know the challenge with myself when i started the thing challenge to myself was me only in terms of recipes yeah. i was i was not getting the perfection because of the new setup and the new chefs and new people working. And, and, and that took me really uh, more than expected time. Getting products, getting raw material, setting up the machinery, that's that's easy. It takes time, but that's the easy part. But getting the recipes right, for example, we have a range which is called Superfood. And I was, I was committed to make it sugar-free. And then we had to make recipes where you don't really add sugar and you still offer sweet things. So the, it's not mm. it's not easy to have a very healthy and delicious. That's delicious is a word for it. So I think the challenge was to get the right recipes. That will remain the challenge even mm. today and every day. We, we kind of think that how to improve and take it to the next level. So Vivek, it sounds like you're focusing on the product. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Varun, you're you're focusing on the marketing and distribution. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the idea. And I mean, coming down to I think my biggest problem was establishing the brand because, let's face it, selling a new brand online, no one has tasted it. They're seeing photos. How do you convince them to buy it? It it's not easy. It took us it took us quite a few months to get the website right. And even today, we're changing the website. Like you're constantly testing. A different button color you're constantly testing how a photo would look if it pops up differently does it make an impact and i think my biggest challenge has always been that how to get customers on the website and actually convert them more and get that going um that's kind of this kind of, so i mean we both have our challenges but then a lot of times we just sit with each other and we're like okay um how can you help me and I help you? <laughs> we kind of get this going. Uh, that that happens every day at lunch. We're just we're just trying to uh, constantly improve and uh, work on better products um, and better better sell them. I imagine you um, being a father son team here. There there's the the parental and family uh, dynamics as well. I imagine you guys uh, together must be really great communicators. Uh, I, I think yes, and uh, uh, I, I would I would say before Varun says anything, I think I have more to uh, learn from a younger generation than to teach them, and I and this is and this is true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to to just to just add to that, uh, let's face it. If he if he wasn't making the product uh, this good, I wouldn't be able to sell it. <laughs> I mean, to to put to put very simply, like. So much so that I spend most of my time in Dubai. Um, I'm retailing the pro I'm retailing the the collections online. I haven't even tasted it myself. <laughs> like the superfood collection was out. I'm retailing it. Customers are purchasing it. Customers are giving feedback. They're liking <laughs> it, and I'm like, I, I don't even know what this tastes like uh, <laughs> till till a few months later. And like that just goes to show how how the relationship has uh, has built and 
how there's a trust factor uh, when you're involved with your dad playing a very important role into how you shape things up. Yeah, I I, uh, I I can only imagine how how that is, but that's that's fantastic. Like it, like it sounds like you guys are a really really like great team together. Are you so Varun? You're prime. Are you based in Dubai or are you traveling back and forth? I'm I'm primarily based in Dubai, just traveling back and forth. Wow. And and so do you have intern? Where do you sell? Is it internationally? Is it in the U.S.? I think. Uh, uh what we need to do is and what varun has been working uh, on is uh, the growth horizontal growth and that's that's expansion of the market uh, and it's, we have picked up some key areas where this product will be very well appreciated because we get feedback from people so i think the expansion uh, beyond uh, just us that's uh, that's one of the agendas, yeah. one of the key areas. Yeah. I mean, as of as of now, we're retailing primarily in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Uh, but like he said, uh, we can expand to other other areas, and we're already working on that. Um, being in Dubai has never been a limitation. Um, it's as easy to get on a Zoom call and get things going. So, so that's something I've been doing for a while. What what kind of um, when you when you talk about the influencers, like I'm thinking about about trial right like you need people to te test sample sampling that's the word i'm looking for sampling yeah. um i imagine influencers and getting their reactions are the closest thing you can get to to a sampling strategy yeah yeah i mean that that is that is one way of looking at it but i mean so even in influencer marketing we could either take a very inauthentic path where we we pay an influencer, we go like, okay, can you say nice things about this and send us a 20 second video? We could use it for our advertising. Or we could have a genuine unboxing experience uh, where they open the box, they have their family around them, they're tasting it, they're giving a review of every product and rating it out of say 10 or out of five. That is something which is more essential when it comes to influencer marketing and really dwelling into an authentic influencer is what we try to do. Uh, I haven't worked with an influencer where I've gone like, you know what, take this and uh, make sure you send a very positive reply. Um, so much so that there are influencers we send it to, we're like, if you don't like it, don't post it. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not asking you to promote something that you yourself are not comfortable with. Um, and that's, that's something we've been focusing on when it comes to influencer marketing. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of trial. Um, there's a lot of figuring out what, what sort of influencer works. Um, what age group works, what background works, and all of that. Um, but then again, uh, getting too driven by data might be a problem. But at the same time, keeping that collaboration going with influencers uh, is great. And we've had so many influencers that we're repeatedly working with. Uh, they've, they've actually helped a lot. Hmm. And do you track when an influencer posts that it relate that it results in a sale? Like, what are what are the metrics you're looking at from an influencer? How do you judge when an influencer campaign is either effective or ineffective? I mean, so previously we we're just trying out a few things and based on our trial, we found out, for example, discount codes work really well for influencers. Mm -hmm. So we had a very unique discount code to every influencer, which offers um, say a five or 10% discount to their customers. And we can track it directly on our platform to see this influencer has got these many sales. Uh, I think that's a simple metric complicating it further, looking into how many followers they had, dividing it by how many orders they had, becomes becomes a little bit cumbersome. I think to keep it very simple, each discount code, how many uh, sales they get is the only metric which which matters. Uh, what is the next, I mean, I did, we're, in the, we're probably gonna be in the peak of your holiday season coming up very shortly. Hopefully it's gonna be a massive, a uh, massive uh, sales opportunity for you guys. What what does the next like six twelve months look like for you? Uh, I think um, uh, I am very excited, uh, and I've been studying a uh, lot of nuts, and um, we foresee that a gourmet nuts or something which you can have um, any time of the day, and uh, uh, whether salty or sweet, uh, but a very uh, premium, delicious. Uh, something uh, that's what I'm working on, and that should be 
uh, the next yeah. um, uh, post the season. Yeah. Mm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, increasing your direct to consumer um, exposure, running more advertising, working with more influencers, and just blowing blowing up in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. Another thing, I'd, one thing I'd like to add is building the relationship with the previous customers. Um, Tell us how you do that. That's something that's something we really want to emphasize on over the next three months. All the customers we've had over the last one year, we want to make sure that we're reaching out to them again. With the right message and the right product, and, uh, and getting it out. Uh, how do you how do you nurture those or maintain or rekindle those relationships? So a lot of a lot of email marketing goes into play. Of course, there is the automated emails which which help out. Uh, but apart from that, a very personal aspect is something that we've been really focusing on. So, for example, we personally Vivek and I we're actually messaging these customers. We're we're telling them, hey. What do you think about it? Let us know. Let us have a feedback. And uh, we're like, do you want to get on a call? We can jump on a call. Or do you want to try out this new product? Like we launched the La Cadio Parfait collection a couple of weeks back, a couple of months back actually. And we sent it out for feedback. Um, and we go, we, we heard back like, this is good. This is good. This is not good. You can improve where. And that's what keeps us going. So I think consumer today is very different from what it was a couple of years back they want to be part of the brand and they want to be part of the journey. And let's face it, I don't think any customer wants to buy a product from a brand that they themselves don't resonate with. Um, and if anything, uh, we envision Lomer as a trendsetter for a healthy lifestyle, healthy indulgence, um, and just a healthy healthy living. If I mean, we are, we are believers of that um, as individuals and we kind of just want to promote it and that's what we were trying to do. It's really interesting. Like, like, you know, when you have a local store and you serve people in a one or two mile radius, um, you have the opportunity as a store owner to get to know your customers. You have that you're built, you're part of the community, right? And this is, it seems like you're trying to, you're, you're working on building that community in a different type of setting with different rules and whatnot. But like, I'm finding that's like a really interesting part of the business because i think a lot of consumers wouldn't realize how how soulful a, a, a business is i mean for a lot of people mine included business is really an expression of who you are the the really great things about who you are and the really poor things about who you are it's just it's just about the humans and the the create the creatorship of that of that process i think a lot of I think there's a massive opportunity there. I think a lot of companies also don't realize that that that, that opportunity exists. So it's really like heartening to see that you guys are doing that. Yeah, yeah. completely, completely agree with you when you say that. I think uh, customers are the priority and the relationship you build with them is, is the only way to go. Um, I think customer experience is underrated. Uh, it shouldn't be. It definitely shouldn't be uh, moving ahead. Can you uh, can you share your website for everyone listening? Definitely, it's lumiergourmet.com. That's l a u m i e r e g o u r m e t dot c o m. We have the same username across all social media. As you're looking at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, however you'd like to reach out, you can definitely do that. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can drop us an email. If you have any suggestions for us, please do so. Uh, we're more than happy to talk to you about it. Uh, his email is vivk at lumegourmet.com and mine is varun at lumegourmet.com. Very good. Uh, Varun Sharma, co-founder at Lumiere Gourmet Fruits and Vivek Sharma, CEO, uh, Lumiere Gourmet Fruits. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And mm-hmm. I, let me just uh, uh, have you another preview, which is not on the website. This is another exclusive. Okay. Exclusive. Very exclusive. This is Christmas. Ooh, I don't have to good. Say, I don't have to say that this is Christmas. Yeah, yeah, that looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, very excited for this Christmas. Very excited for uh, the people who cannot reach, uh, who cannot travel, and very excited to serve the people. Yeah. Who've been, who've been, um, um, their close, their nears and dear ones are not with them, and they want to send something. So, I think. I'm 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 very happy that we are part of a, 
a, a company or we are the company who's making people happy during this tough time, this festive time, and moving forward. Lomir Gourmet Fruits. Thank you guys so much. This is great. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing this with uh, with our listeners. Thank you so much today. Thank you, so much. Thank you Robert, once again. Pleasure Thank being here.